um, yeah, for plants and stuff like that, like you can basically create your own like leaves or vines and stuff and then drag them on. So if you go to hit B for brush, there's sort of two categories of brushes that allow you to add, you know, in my I showed you guys this painter brush where you load one mesh in that you want to paint with and you select another mesh that you want to paint on. So there's actually something like this called uh, insert multi mesh. They're called IMM for short, insert multi mesh. Click and drag, you've got a zipper on the surface. If I do a smaller one, you see a smaller zipper. So if I adjust the brush size, and you can drag it across the surface, right? If I hit brush, there's different types. So some of them are just like individual items. Like this one is the army curve. So if I click on this, it'll actually replace that with its, its a different strap. Or if I click on this, this is a tube or a piping, right? Click on this, it's like, I think, tank treads or like a bike tread kind of thing. Uh, and you can see that they're accessible up here. So sometimes there are multiple variations within one brush. So I'll go back to one of the hoses. Hit B for brush again. I for insert mesh. There is like spaceship parts. Now I think if I click and drag, these are like little nuts and bolts and kind of gears that somebody made, right? So you can click and drag stuff onto a surface. If you want it to snap to a certain size, you hold control. So you click and drag out first, then hold control. Right? So that will actually snap it to the brush size. You see my, my circle size, my, uh, this is actually the, yeah, the draw size. So if I had a lar larger draw size, click and drag this out and then hold control, it's snapping it to this, roughly this, this brush size, right? So if you know you need a bunch of nuts and bolts on top of an object, but you need them a certain size, you say, oh, I need them this size, and then just hold control, which will snap them so that they're all the same consistent size, right? So that's one way to do it. So like you could do plants this way where you build a curved brush and you know make vines that way, let's say. So you, um, I'm not gonna get into how to make, uh, I guess a detailed brush like that, but I will show you, I guess I've got one brush here. Um, let me just, I made this um, sort of um, vertebrae object. And what you can do with that is actually turn it into a brush. So a lot of times if you want, let's say you want the base of this thing to land on the surface of an object, you would look at it from a top view Click on the brush menu. If I can get it to load here, why isn't it opening? All right, let's try something else. I'll click down here. I'll go to brush instead. Sometimes things go a little goofy in ZBrush. Um, yeah, let's reset all brushes. That's yeah, weird. My palette doesn't want to open for some reason. There we go. So I'll click on the standard brush down here, and what you can do is go to load brush, or sorry, uh, create insert mesh. So what it's doing is it's looking at, so I'm gonna make a new brush. So if I jump to another character mesh, for example, I can now click and drag that, that brush onto it. And if you take a look here in my custom interface, you see there's this little floating thing. This is actually the placement. So this placement is hovering above the surface of the mesh. So if I want it to be more embedded, I can drop this so it's more in contact with the surface, so it's resting more on top of that mesh. So that's an insert brush. Well, what you can also do with this is go to stroke and go to curve and turn on curve mode and drag out a whole bunch of these, right? So I've actually created my own, uh, my own brush here. Um, if I go to load brush, and you can save them from here. So I turn this into a vertebrae brush, meaning that if I now drag, Let's say from here to here, we just adjust the curve a bit, right? It can create this sort of spine effect. And this is how people actually, to some degree, will create things like uh, straps and things like that. And you may notice it's sort of scaling down towards the end, and that's because I simply added a modifier in here. So you can have it be one consistent size, and if I click on this, it'll update, right? If I go to the depth and adjust that so it's more embedded, and now it looks like it's coming out of his back, right? Pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of amazing functions. And um, one way that the strap brushes are made, I can maybe try to show you this real quick, is that, so I mentioned this before briefly, there's things called polygroups, right? So if you hit Shift F, um, and then you make a polymesh 3D, so if I'm using a primitive, you won't see the colors until you make polymesh. To make polygroups, you basically can uh, isolate or hide parts of the mesh. So this is holding control, shift, click, and drag. 
I can hit Control W. This now actually gives it a different coloring, right? So if I Control Shift, click and drag. Control Shift is basically a visibility tool. And by hitting Control W, I now have three polygroups, right? So if I go into brush, um, sorry, I'll click on my standard brush down here because my menu is being a little goofy. So I'll go create insert mesh to start. Create a new brush. Go back to earthquake. And again, it's wanting me to freeze this thing. So I'm just going to delete lower in this case. So if I drag this out, it's just dragging it out. But if I turn it into a stroke, so I go to curve mode, stroke, curve mode, and drag this out, it will try to create like a, a connected brush. Um, um, yeah, to get the points welded in this, so um, before when I drew it out, it was not kind of welding the points, so I'm going to turn off weld points and curve res down. So you were getting this broken mess. To get something that's more of a continuous thing, you can actually do um, weld points and then curve res. And that should kind of give you some you know, smoother mesh. So in theory, what you could do, I'm going to do a really, really crappy version of this. Um, so I'm going to just go to a cylinder, right? So somebody asked about like creating vines or plants. Well, you could do something like this where you just have an insert brush. Um, so you can make either a leaf, but I'll just do, let's say something like a vine, for example. Um, I'll go to initialize and just make this really kind of skinny, 20 by 20. Like so. And then I'll go into subtool. You can append. Append basically means to add a subtool. So I'm going to add, um, I guess I'll add, yeah, I guess I'll just do a flat plane for now. So I'm going to just pretend this is my, my kind of leaf, right? So I'll just sort of warp this thing. Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> yeah, let's just say this is my, my lovely leaf here. Um, and I'll move the whole thing. So I'll just go to the Move tool. Scale it, move it. If you hold Control, by the way, uh, Control Move does a duplicate. So I'm going to rotate that like so. Okay, so we'll just kind of put these in contact. I'm going to actually merge them all down together so they're one piece. So I'm going to merge. Uh, this is under the Subtool palette, by the way. So make sure these are available. Merge. Go to Merge Visible. In this case, um, so this is all, oops, sorry, it's not merged yet. So I'll go up to the top thing here. Sorry, I think I screwed up my project a bit. I, you know, if you don't click on Make Polymesh 3D when it comes to creating a cylinder or whatever, you can have some issues. So I do Make Polymesh 3D, and I'm now going to append or add the leaves over to this. Now I should be able to merge down. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, basically isolate uh, or hide maybe the top piece here. Hit Control W a couple of times till I get a different color. Grab the bottom piece, hit Control W, so that's a different color. So I'm going to Control Shift click on this, Control Shift click on this, and hit Control W. So you need three polygroups to make one of these kind of like vine brushes, okay? Um, so I should actually go back to this and do a create, yeah, create. Create, insert mesh, make a new one. Let's go back to our earthquake here. And I'm gonna make sure, yeah, if I drag this out, you see it does that, right? So I need to go into stroke, <coughs> curve mode, click on this, and it'll replace it like so, right? But if I go to, again, if I go to uh, weld points and then maybe up the curve res so it can curve more fluidly, you'll get you know, some kind of vine. Again, this is a really rough example, but uh, this is sort of one way you could you know, try to update or create plants basically on your mesh, right? Again, my leaves are really, really terrible. So they're a little bit janky, but you'll see it's uh, you know, creating kind of vines that way. Now, the other way is like you just sculpt a piece of mesh, you know, sculpt a plane or a box or something, create like one palm leaf and then you could drag it out multiple times onto another object.